Now, in all sincerity, it's so important for everyone in this audience to feel like they're supported by ISD. And one of our PLNs works really hard every single day to support this. The ISD Inclusive Learning Network provides tools to support all students with a variety of backgrounds, learning profiles, and abilities. We have someone here for you today who is so excited to share some of his best practices with all of you. Our second TED-Ed speaker is Luis Perez. He's the incoming president of the Inclusive Learning Network, and he's a technical assistant specialist at the National Center on Accessible Educational Materials at CAST. He's published two books on inclusive learning and technology. Please join me in welcoming Louise to the stage. I'm here, and they're still putting the carpet out, and now it's out. And you're coming up on the edge of the carpet, and now you're right in the middle, you're perfectly safe. Turn to the light. That was the motto of the high school that I attended. And when I was in high school, that expression didn't really have a lot of meaning to me. But it gained a lot of meaning later on in my life when as an adult, after a series of serious car accidents, I was diagnosed with a visual impairment. I have a condition known as retinitis pigmentosa, or RP for short. And the best way to explain RP to you is to take you inside my eyes. These are some photos from a recent eye exam that I had done a few weeks ago. Those dots that you see near the middle of my eyes, that's where the photoreceptor cells in my eyes have died. That's my blind spot where I can no longer see. With retinitis pigmentosa, you progressively lose your vision starting from the outside in until someday I could be completely blind. Now, there's a really quick way that you can experience what it's like to see when you have retinitis pigmentosa. And what you can do is just take your hand, make two small circles, and then look through them. Now, to be honest with you, uh, it actually comes in handy sometimes. <laughs> this would be one of those times because I can't see most of you, so I'm not as nervous as I would normally be. <laughs> now, the thing about retinitis pigmentosa is that it's more than just about my eyes. It's about a lived experience. And I wanna share with you a little bit about that lived experience with a poem that I wrote. It's called Entre, or Between. Neither here nor there, neither blind nor sighted. I see you, but not all of you. You see me, but not all of me. Ni aquí, ni allá. The islands, the city, the country. Espanol, Spanglish, English. Yo y quien soy, ay quien sabe. So I learned to live in between, in and out of the shadows. And as the light turns to dark, and the darkness comes to life, I've learned to just dance, just dance in those shadows. What this poem captures is my experience as somebody who lives between and betwixt. As a person with a visual impairment, I'm neither fully sighted nor fully blind. I live in between worlds. As a person of color and as an immigrant, I also live in between worlds. Now schools often want us to choose. They want to assign us to a category. They want to give us a label. But life is not always so neatly organized. How much more rich would education be if we acknowledge that we all have complex identities that should be valued and incorporated into education? Now, today, I'm pretty comfortable in my own skin as a person with a disability. Maybe not so much at this moment, in front of all of you, but typically I am. 
But that wasn't always the case. When I was first diagnosed with my visual impairment, I went into a long depression. And I consider that one of the darkest times in my life. In fact, I almost didn't make it. So how was it that I was able to step out of the shadows, come out of the darkness, and step into the light? Let me share with you three things that really helped me. The first was my daughter. She is the reason why I'm here today. Wanting to be a role model for her encouraged me to get help, and that made me a better person. And I wasn't sure when I was first diagnosed if I would get to see that day, but just a few weeks ago, she graduated from high school. The second thing that really helped me step out of the darkness was learning about assistive technology. One day, by chance, I was setting up a new computer when I discovered this feature called VoiceOver. And I turned it on and I heard this. The VoiceOver Quick Start. In this Quick Start, you'll learn VoiceOver basics as well as important VoiceOver commands to help you navigate on your Mac and use apps. Now, Alex is not actually a person. It's a synthesized voice that speaks to you on the Mac and on your iOS devices. I've called meeting Alex a magical moment because in an instant, my life was changed. Alex didn't just speak to my ears, it spoke to my heart. What was more important than the quality of the voice was the message that the com technology communicated to me. And it was a message of hope. It was a message that said, everything's gonna be okay no matter what happens. And that's my message to you. With hope, learners can overcome any obstacle. Without hope, even the smallest barrier will hold them back. The last thing that helped me step out of the darkness and into the light was finding joy in everyday life. And the way that I did that was by taking up a hobby, but not just any hobby. I took up the hobby that you would least expect from somebody with a significant visual impairment. I decided to learn photography. <laughs> and yes, that is my first camera with a whopping 1.3 megapixels. <laughs> so let me share with you a few of my photos. Of course, you can find more on my Instagram account. So why do I do photography? Why, I, why do I take photos that someday I may not be able to see? Well, it turns out that if you're just focusing on the photos, you're missing the big picture. See what I did there? <laughs> the reason why I do photography is because for me, it's not an artistic act. It's a political one. I take photos for the same reason that blind photographer Pete Eckert does. The photos are actually for you. The event of taking the photos is for me. The reason I do photography is because it is about being visible. As a person with a disability, as a person of color, as an immigrant, it is more important than ever that I be visible. We're not going away. Photography makes me visible in physical space. When I show up somewhere with my white cane and my camera, <laughs> it causes people to reconsider their preconceived ideas and their stereotypes about people with disabilities, especially those of us who have visual impairments. And of course, when I share those photos online, it makes me visible in those spaces where most of our conversations are now taking place. 
So how do I do my photography? Well, I use a number of technologies that are built into my smartphone. And here's an example of one of those, facial recognition. I can tell me how many people are in the frame. There should have been sound there. Oops. <laughs> and of course, I need to get to the places that I want to photograph. And two of the apps that have had some of the biggest impacts in my life are Uber and Lyft. Because where I live, transportation can be spotty, public transportation. And cabs can be expensive and unreliable. These two apps have been a game changer for me in that they have given me much of my independence back. And the final thing that helps me is that whether I'm learning about photography or any other topic, I now do most of my reading on a tablet using, using accessible materials that are created in the EPUB format. With these books, I can adjust the text size and make it as large as I need it to be. I can change the background for additional contrast. And when my eyes get tired at the end of the day, I can have Alex read it to me. It's been said that for most of you, technology makes things possible or makes them easier. For me, it simply makes them possible. So I want to share with you another example of how it does that. This is my friend, Logan Prickett. When Logan was 13 years old, he went in for a routine MRI. Unfortunately, he was allergic to the dye that he was injected with, and he went into a coma. And when he woke up from that coma 12 days later, he was blind, he had a significant motor impairment, and because they crushed his vocal cords while he was receiving life-saving measures, he cannot speak above a whisper. So our challenge, I worked with a team at Auburn University at Montgomery, was to create a way for Logan to participate in his education along with his peers. What we did is we designed a complex communication system built around his smartphone that allowed Logan to go to class and allowed him to complete all his assignments and allowed him to do anything that a normal or typical college student would do. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Just a few weeks ago, Logan graduated from college. <laughs> Not only that, he graduated from college, magna cum laude, in four years. <laughs> Not only that, he is a published author. We published a book chapter on his technology. Not only that, he's actually working on a project, an NSF-funded project, to make math accessible to other blind students like him. So here's the thing. I'm going to go off script a little bit because I want to speak to the political moment right now. Logan describes himself as a southern good old boy. I am a northeast liberal. There is very little chance that we would normally meet in everyday life. Our politics are different. Our religions are probably different. We probably listen to different music. But the main thing is we found the humanity in each other. Whenever I work with somebody like Logan, my goal is not to do for him what he can do for himself. My goal is just to provide him with the tools that will empower him to be the best thing that he can be, the best person that he can be. And that's my challenge to you. My challenge to you is to just be the spark, to light the path, give learners the tools that they need to be empowered, and to pursue their dreams, to pursue their goals. I want to leave you with one final thought, if you take only one thing from this talk. We educators, we are the light that is so desperately needed today. Will you join me in making more light? Thank you. <laughs>